All right, let's get some more Pistons love going on, which reminds me, all of you should join us live for the NBA draft uh, only a little over a week away right now. So mark your calendars. I think it's the 22nd. We will be live on Sports Talk Detroit. Would love to have you there. Let's get bigger numbers than we had for the Lions uh, at NFL draft. Like what I've noticed is that Pistons fans, there may not be as many Pistons fans as there are Lions fans out there, but it feels like y'all show up in a seriously good way. Whenever we do live stuff with the Pistons, it, it's never, it's never a bad thing. Let me just put it that way. So, Hey, check us out with that. But the Detroit Pistons are striking gold. Once again, um, I want to share an article with you from Detroit bad boys. And it's saying that a lot of staff, um, and Monty will for Monty Williams is coming with him from the Suns. We're going to talk about that in a second, but first his staff is really starting to take shape. We had a video on here about Steven Silas as the associate head coach. He's known for working with young guards. Monty Williams is known for his five second offense and also having a top offense and defense in the league. But still you kind of thought with the first two big hires, you're like, okay, those are more offensive minded. Maybe um, are those offensive minded? And I know Monty Williams is very well-rounded, so d don't worry about that. But former Philadelphia 76ers assistant, Dan Burke is going to join Williams's bench. This is why we have channels like this because we care about guys like Dan Burke. All right. Dan Burke has been in the league since 1989 and he has been with that many teams. Are you kidding me right now? He has been in the league for 34 years and he's been with three teams. That's amazing. He was with the Blazers in 89 to 97. Did they have any good teams back then, by the way? Maybe Clyde Drexler. I think so. He was with the Pacers from 1997 to 2020. He was with them for 23 years. And then he has been with the 76ers since then with Doc Rivers. And he's gained the reputation as being one of the top defensive assistants in basketball. All right. We can read this right here. This is kind of a kind of a cool thing. It says Burke had been an anomaly in coaching circles. He was hired to join Larry Bird's staff in Indiana for the 97-98 season. That the season featured on The Last Dance when the Pacers took Chicago to the brink of the conference finals and never left. In a league defined by rapid coaching turnover and therefore assistant coaching turnover, Burke was retained by six Indiana Pacers head coaches, Larry Bird, Isaiah Thomas, Rick Carlisle, Jim O'Brien, Frank Vogel, and Nate McMillan. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. So here's the question for me. We know that we've got um, Monty Williams as the head coach. Is there a world? Where Monty Williams, remember, he was going to take a year off. We convinced him with a massive offer to stick around. Is there a world where Monty Williams kind of goes to this offense and defensive assistant type thing where you maybe set up Steven Silas as your associate head coach slash offensive coordinator? And you now have Dan Burke almost becoming your de facto defensive coordinator. And then what you do is you just kind of do it. Um, this goes back with Doc Rivers back to the Boston, um, thing. I think Tom Thibodeau was on that staff. I think Tom Thibodeau was on that staff as a defense. Now, is it easier to have good defense when Kevin Garnett's roaming in the middle? Yeah, it is. All right. Yeah. But he hired Burke to be Philly's defensive coordinator, despite having no personal relationship with him because his reputation was so strong in league circles. Not bad. All right. And in those three years, Philly has ranked second, 12th, and eighth in defensive rating. Not bad. It helps when you have Embiid, but Embiid, 
as much as it helps to have Embiid, it hurts that much to have Harden. <laughs> I'm just going to say, if Harden can be on your team and you're like 12th and 8th, if you are even sniffing the top 10 and Harden's on your team, you are doing something very, very good. All right, so I, I would say this. Fisher, in the article that he was writing, also said that several ass assistant coaches are expected to follow Monty Williams to Detroit, including Mark Bryant and potentially Jarrett Jack. All right, Jack was a close friend of Chris Paul's and was said to be an integral coaching figure among Suns players. This is the younger, closer, former player. Like, this is somebody you always want this on the coaching staff, especially if they have the right head and they have the coaching mindset because they can be a former player. They can be a great connection to the team with the team and the coach, it can be an integral part. Players can feel more comfortable going to a former player like that. Who's younger. I know Monty was a former player. I get it. All right. But like, sometimes they just like going to a guy that's closer in age to them. And I would imagine Jarrett Jack is in his late thirties, probably mid to late thirties. Um, I would imagine he's about the same age as Chris Paul. So I remember him playing at Georgia tech. I, I remember Jarrett Jack in the NBA. Come on. Now he always worked hard. He was, he worked hard. Now, with that, I will say a couple of things that are that are happening. Um, Brittany Dixon and um, Donaldson, I think it is, or DJ Baker. A couple people are leaving. Leaving um, Donaldson was is going to move after one season to Quinn Snyder's coaching staff in Atlanta. She is the director of coaching analytics. DJ Baker, who spent the past two seasons coaching the Motor City Crews move on to join Adrian uh, Griffin staff in Milwaukee. So I don't think those are huge losses. I like the gains more. And that's what happens when you bring in a big name head coach, you bring in that big name head coach, you bring in Monty Williams and he has respect around the league. So now Detroit is arguably building what honestly hear me out here. Detroit is building what could honestly be tabbed as the best coaching uh, bench in the NBA. And so there is no excuse for these young guys not to develop and get better quickly unless they're just not there. But Troy Weaver must not be the only one seeing it because if Monty Williams is willing to go there, I know 12 million, I get it. All right. But also if Silas is willing to go, if Burke is willing to go, it means these guys are willing to start something thinking that there could be something very, very special going on in Detroit and that they can make use of these young players and get them there sooner than later within a couple of years. I really do believe that. And so it'll be fun. Let's just keep watching it. Let's keep seeing what happens. Um, hey, thank you again for watching these videos. Join us live for the NBA draft. Hit a comment below. Um, do you like what's happening with this staff as much as I do? Cause I could not be happier. I feel like they're hitting it on every single level. Um, and Hey, if you haven't, uh, become a member of the channel, maybe think about it. All right. See you on the next one.